Welcome back to an RPG Maker Unite tutorial. Today we're going to create a map and we're also going to add some tiles. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so first let's create a map and all you got to do is go to map settings. And then if you drop down the map list, you can see these are all the maps that we have. Now this is using the sample project. So we have all of these maps, but we want to create a new one. So all we have to do is right click on the map list and we can create a map from sample maps or from a new map. So by sample maps, all you got to do is go over here and you can right click and you can just start to view some of these maps and see if one is interesting for you to have. Now, some of these maps are pretty big and they take a little bit to load. But you also have like these smaller maps like homes and a church here. I'm pretty sure these sample maps are from either MV or MZ. It's one of those the sample maps come from. And so then if we want to create one, we can just choose it from here and then we can choose which one that we want. Otherwise, we can just create a new map. So let's create a new map since we're going to be doing stuff with tiles and all this stuff. I'm going to click on new map. All right. And then when it loads that new map, it's going to show up down here. All right. And so right now it's undefined because it doesn't have a name. So let's name this. Let's just say new map here. And this is the display name that will show up when you go into that map if you want one. The size is just the same as normal RPG makers where it's based on tiles. So if you wanted to say give it a 15 tile width and then a 15 tile height. This is how you would do it. And you can tab through these settings as well. You would also be able to set the do not loops and, and stuff like this. I'll just leave all these settings like this for you to explore. But mainly we just need to know how to place tiles, right? When you are ready to start placing tiles, you now come down here and you select what layers you want those tiles on. Now the tiles are gonna be associated with the A, B, C, D particularly, but you'll also have this background layer and parallax layer which you'll be able to choose from an actual image. So when you're on the background here, you can actually come up here to image and you can select one that's already loaded into the editor here. And so this one will pop up like this. You can use your, if you click down on the mouse wheel, you can move around, you can zoom out by just the mouse wheel in general and go in and out. And so this is going to be the, let's just say this is the background of the scene. Of course, it's not gonna fit this scene, I'm kind of making this uh, video more to just show you the mechanics of the of this uh, editor here. And so you can also remove it and remove it just like this. But let's just say that you wanted to use this. You wanted to use a parallax as this. The next thing you would do is you'd go to collision placement. So to understand when you need collision placement, basically, if you're not using tiles where you can assign the tile as can pass or stuff like this, you have to associate what tiles can be passed. So for instance, if you're using parallax mapping, which is like this, where I have an image as my, as my map, then I would have to specify what tiles I can walk on. I know that's a little backwards from previous RPG makers where you usually just specify what you can't walk on, but that's just how this has to work in Unity. So for instance, you could select this one right here and you can see that it is a can pass. And so then you would just start laying it down on areas that the player will be able to move on. You can go over here and you can select this and you can actually give it like a wide range. And then you could also, you know, delete them like that. Let's just say there's a circle. Let's just say, I'm not sure it would make like a circle here. Kind of like that. You can see it circling out. And then you also have this unique option right here, which will allow you to actually add shadows while you're not in the shadow pen layer. However, you can't delete the shadows unless you're in the shadow pen layer. So just keep that in mind that you have to erase it in the shadow pen layer. So that kind of leads us to the shadow pen layer. It's kind of self-explanatory. You basically, you, with the uh, drawing thing selected, you basically plant these shadows in quarter tiles, and then you can just kind of specify what would have a shadow on it, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so moving on, I'm going to real quickly erase all of these things. Now with a race, you can actually also select the rectangle. And so you can race in bulk like that. And then I'm going to go to the background here. And I'm not going to delete it from here. If you delete it from here, I believe you delete it from your resources. I'm actually just going to say do not set and then it's going to take it away. And then I'll just have my my blank map to start tiles in. All right, so let's understand these layers better. We have the a layer, which is going to be the lowest layer, most likely for your ground and stuff like this. Then you'll have your B layer, which will show above the A. Then you'll have a shadow layer, which will show above A and B, but it will show below C and D. Then you have your C layer and then your D layer. 
and the D is going to show above everything else. So that's how you can kind of imagine this. The A is going to be the lowest, and then D is going to be the highest, and then everything in between is pretty self-explanatory. All right, so let's add a ground tile on the A layer. And so all we got to do is click on add a tile, and then we have a bunch of different types of tiles to choose from. So the tile systems are set up a little differently than in previous RPG makers, somewhat the same, somewhat different. And if you are coming in new to RPG Maker, just note that you have a lot of auto tiling options and stuff like this. So the first thing we got to do is pick a tile. So I just kind of want my grass here. So I'll just pick on this grass and click OK. And then I can just click on this and I can just start to draw. You can see that it's starting to auto tile and things like this. I can just click on paint and paint the whole thing now if I want. So that is one way to do it. So the next thing that we could do is we can actually load a tile group, all right? And there are some pre-made tile groups already here. So we could say, this is world A1, this is outside A1. And so this would be, you know, like your waterfalls and stuff like this. And you can just search around. So this outside A2, this is normally like your ground auto tiles and stuff like this. So I'll just click okay on this. And now I get access to that tile group. And then I can paint it over here. And now I lose those, kind of dirt borders that it had. And then I can actually just create dirt paths, just like this, all right? Now, once you load a tile group, it will wipe whatever you had. So if you did have single tiles loaded, like I did, it, when you load a tile group, it will wipe it all out. Now, another cool thing about mapping is that once you place the tiles, you do not have to keep your tile group. You can actually load a different tile group. Let's say that I want some, let's see here, Let's say that I want some of this now. I can just click OK. It's going to load that tile group, and then I'm going to be able to start to paint right here. So your, date, your tile data on your map will stay. You're just loading in and out of tile groups that you need. For those of you that come from previous RPG makers, you can see how this can be really, really nice, loading in and out tile sets to make your layers. All right, so I got this layer on A. Now let's go to B, which again, you'll have completely different tile groups loaded with that one. Go back to A, you'll have your original ones that you had, but go back to B. So now we'll load another tile group. And on B, let's just do, let's just see what else we have here. Let's just load some of this stuff. So let's go like this. And I'll just do something simple. I'll do some of these like dirt patches here, kind of decorating. I'm not the best mapper there is, but we'll just kind of decorate it a little bit with this. And then we can go to the a C layer here. All right, so in this layer, I'm gonna add another tile group, and these are what we call large parts in RPG Maker Unite. It's basically objects that are bigger than a normal one single tile. So I'm gonna click OK on this, and you can see now that my selector is selecting the whole group of things like this. So these three stacked barrels, it's all of them. What I'm gonna do is go up here and I'm going to paste this. Let's see, um, yeah, let's have it blocking the road and then maybe another one right here, all right? And so then what you can do is go to the shadow layer, and you can start to pin in some of these shadows. Say the sun is right here or something like this, and, you know, something like this. Now, this situation isn't ideal for a shadow pen. It's more for cliffs that still utilize the square portion of the tile, but you kind of get the idea of how these shadows go below the C but above the A. And so then you would just continue as you needed, You'd add a tile group here. All right, so the next thing that I wanna show is the effect placement. So when you come here, you're gonna have four new layers and they correspond exactly with the normal tile layers as well. So A is gonna be lowest, D is gonna be the highest. And so we can actually add effects here. So when you add a tile, when you just add a single tile, you have all these different options. We're gonna click on the effects tab and we're gonna click on this one. This is the only one that comes by default. Click okay. Then we can come and we can start to place it. So I'll just place it right here. And then if we want to see that it is indeed showing with the layers, I'll just go to effect A real quick. I'll add that same tile. And then I will put it right under this barrel. So you can see that it's under the barrel, but it is still above the ground. All right. So now what we can do is we can play test this. Now, in order to play test a map, you just click on event. And then you right click and you click initial placement player. All right. So that's going to spawn in the player when we go to play test this. And to play test, you just click on this button right here and it will load up. And when the title screen goes, we just click new game and it will appear us. All right. We can see that the auto tiles are working. We can see the shadows right there. 
Here is our effect layer right here. That one's underneath the barrel. You can see that there are collisions associated with the tiles as well. And notice that we didn't have to set up any collision because we're using tiles. And these tiles are based on collision. Now I am going to have another video on exactly how to set up tiles and stuff like this because it's a little more involved. And so that will make a better video. But this is just how you can make a map and you can get started with a map just with the default assets that come with the engine, no matter if you are using a base template or a sample map, they all come with these base tiles. So to end this play test, we can just click on this. The only other real things to show when you're in the map editor is that you have these things right here where you can show the layer So you can click to unshow. So this is unshowing a, so we won't see the ground at all. And then we can also have an option to highlight the current layer. So for instance, right now, only the ground is highlighted. If I go to B, we'll see that nothing is highlighted except for these uh, the patches that I put, I forgot. And then we have the shadow pen will be highlighted. C, so the C layer, the barrels and the trees. And then we had nothing on D, so nothing should be highlighted. And so yeah, those are what those options are for. They're really handy. And I really like this new tile group system and adding tiles just on the fly. It's really nice. So we're going to get into specifics on how to set up auto tiles, what an auto tile is, how to do all these things in another video. So any questions, comments below, Steam Forms Discord, get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.